these are my uh, my coils. It's a three ton spring pre-cut that I was gonna put in the front. I have some stock Impala ones. These are the stock Impala ones, these are ugly. So there's a difference of what was gonna be from the front, number of coils and everything. But I ran into a little issue. Now, the car's got a fully wrapped frame, but uh, I have stock uppers and lowers and a stock rear end. So, three ton, three ton pre-cut spring does not fit in a stock lower control arm. Does not go in there. So, surprise, I gotta buy more stuff. Puts you back four or five days. I ordered the part immediately. I went on to eBay and I got this Chrome because that's what was available. Chrome uh, pre-cut three ton also, but it's a little smaller in the bottom, so it fits and it's the same size. The other ones up top so i mean if you've never done this and you're a beginner like me these are the, some of the things you run into like it's never as fast as you think it's going to be and it's never as cheap but you know i i'm just waiting for the deep cups to come in and then i'm putting this front front end back together and then i'll go to the back and weld my power balls in but just another thing, you know, it, it, it slowed me down. It seems like I don't need, I don't know what I need till it's time. And you need one little silly part and it slows you down for four or five days. And then you get that part, you move forward, you know, you move forward a few steps and you realize you need something else, but it's all part of the game. Here's a mock-up of the rack. We got a Hoppo's pre-bent rack. The pre-made ones they have is a two, three battery racks. I put uh, uprights on them. The uprights have uh, holes and they're capped at the bottom. That way I can bolt it to the, to the frame. And I tapped in, I tapped uh, some threads into the frame because uh, the frame is uh, 3 8 reinforced. So you got a little more thick metal, 3 8 plus the half inch frame. And then I have this uh, quarter inch, like two by four. And I got it, I got it notched right here. And then this side right here is capped off. And then I drilled a hole right here and I drilled the hole all the way through, actually. I drilled it all the way through, and I put a, a nut and bolt, and then uh, I welded from the backside. I beveled it a little bit, so it would have uh, room to grab when I welded it, and then I welded it from this side also, but I grinded uh, some of that down. So I'm pretty confident that that's welded in there tight. Got some good penetration. Same on the other side. I'm gonna do a little leg one leg on this side. That way when it's in the trunk, uh, it could just sit there and then the other side will be on the frame. Not sure if it'll need it, but I'll put it in there first, put the batteries and see how I feel about it. I probably will do the leg and this will be where my hydraulic pumps go. I'm gonna set them, I'm not gonna set them pointing out. I'm gonna set two of them if I can this way. One here, one there. That way I, the, the pumps don't come out to here in the trunk. I'll just have them right here. And to mount the pumps, I got a quarter inch plate that I'll cut and set. I'll set that in there. And uh, on my grinds right here, I'm gonna take something less abrasive and smooth out my grinds a little more so you don't see grind, my, uh, grind marks. 
like these these corners are the corners you'll see so i'll fix those grind marks those grind marks that's it probably just like the four the four grind marks you can see and i'll send this off the powder coat okay, so right here i have uh the trailing arms this one just came off the car mike over here got them off for me and uh this is where the the spring goes these are some trailing arms i got from a good good buddy nice he uh, gifted these to me but they're not gonna work you know i measured them and uh i didn't notice this at first but my mike over here pointed it out that from hole to hole these are almost two inches shorter and i'm like no way but but yeah they they're a little bit shorter so i'm just gonna use these ones that just came off the car a little bit more work i'm gonna reinforce the bottom these were already reinforced on the bottom then i gotta cut this off spring perch uh, cut that off and weld my power ball in there what we did is i'm gonna cut these off i cut these off and i mark where my power ball is gonna sit uh so for a clean cut i'm gonna run down and get the correct size uh hole saw so i can get this circular part right and then i'll sink them in a little bit and weld them and then i'm gonna reinforce the bottom Mike made me a template while I was cutting off the spring perch. And I'm going to have these templates. They're cut in this way so they don't overlap the whole thing or cover the whole thing. So I could put my weld on technically what would be the bottom side in, in, uh, in the gap. So I don't have a, a weld and have a goober sticking out of the side. So I'll do that and I mark what side my power ball's on. So it's like this. And uh, I traced them out here. With a marker and i'm gonna cut them off cut them out and i'll put them on there and uh, weld them on there so i'll show you that when it's done I'm do some tacks for now and to get the shape i, I clamp it down all right so i got my trailing arms ready to put on I reinforce the bottom with a plate. I use the hole saw to to cut the the roundness, and I went maybe three eighths of an inch deep, and then I sat my power balls in there and welded them on the all four sides, and I added my zerk fitting. So these zerk fittings, or the grease fittings, whatever you want to call them, uh, these ones called for a 3 16 and uh, the holes on these power balls had no threads so when the holes have threads for the grease fittings the grease fittings will be the correct threads and this part from here down will be square and uh, you'll just thread them in they'll be square or hex so you can put a wrench and just thread them in on these ones that had no threads so what i would i did is i took a seven millimeter deep socket and put it in there and it fit right over the top part but it would sit on the bottom round part and i just tapped them in with a hammer until they were flush all the way down to the power ball and i did that for both and these are about ready to put in the car all right guys mistake 972 i ordered my uh my basic kit from CCE and it came with uh, eight inch cylinders all the way around. I upgraded the deep cups and then I upgraded the power balls. Well, for an Impala, 64 Impala, eight inch cylinders do not work uh, with coil, with the coil in there like that. Eight inch cylinders will work with coil under but uh that's not as safe in my opinion so let me give you guys show you what's going on so there you see i got the cylinder this is a better shot right here i got my uh trailing arm reinforced i welded my power ball to it and then I did my 
my coil in in the cylinder and uh, I put it in and it come to the trunk that rear ends all the way up with the coil touching touching the frame and uh, the eight inch cylinder won't go through so you have the frame and then it needed to come in through the trunk see that's definitely not going to work So I guess I'll get some 12-inch uh, cylinders. That way I could have them sticking out three or four inches into the trunk shelf. Um, you know, this is my first time doing hydraulics. Uh, I've owned a few Impalas. And I had some stock suspension, bag suspension. So this is just another mistake that I'm doing by by not knowing, wanting to go mild, I should have got a, a 12 inch cylinder. A 10 inch cylinder, probably stick out an inch, inch and a quarter, which if you got 10 inch cylinders, that might work, but I'm just gonna go with 12 inch cylinders. I actually already ordered them because I thought this was gonna be a problem once I started to look into it, but I figured I'd just uh, put these on there just to, just to double check.